Bovine tuberculosis, or TB, is an infectious disease affecting domestic cattle and deer herds. It's commonly found as small lesions in lymph nodes of the chest area. In New Zealand, TB is typically spread through close contact with other animals in a herd, or with wild animals like possums and ferrets. Cattle infected with TB are slaughtered. Uninfected cattle from the same herd often end up being sold at heavily reduced prices. Left unchecked, TB could seriously damage our reputation for top quality meat and dairy products and jeopardise access to high value export markets worth around $12 billion per year. The cost of that would soon balloon out to hundreds of millions of dollars a year. Uh, and even a small loss of market access uh, would cost the country perhaps a billion dollars a year quite easily. The Animal Health Board is responsible for the TB Free New Zealand program, which aims to eventually eradicate TB from both farmed livestock and the wild animals that spread the disease. Cattle and deer are regularly tested. Usually a skin test is sufficient, but sometimes a follow-up blood test is needed to confirm infection. The frequency of cattle and deer testing depends on the likely risk of livestock becoming infected. Herds with a high risk of contact with infected possums or ferrets will usually have to be tested every year, and some before they're moved for grazing or sale, while those in areas with no known TB in wildlife may only need to be tested once every three years. Herds in around 40% of New Zealand are identified as being at high risk of contracting bovine TB from infected wild animals, known as vectors. The movement of cattle and deer is also closely controlled to ensure the disease doesn't spread from vector risk areas, the places where TB is known to be present in wild animals. Identity tags and Animal Status Declaration Forms, or ASDs, are used to track movements of farm animals and provide information about their history. These regulations are a legal requirement and also provide some reassurance to purchasers or grazers. This information is also useful for tracing back infection from a herd outbreak to pinpoint the original disease source. However, managing the spread of the disease within herds is only part of the solution. Possums are particularly susceptible to the disease, and the vast majority of new infections identified in domestic livestock can be traced back to possums. TB possum found 67. They'd identified that TB possums were the cause of TB in cattle by about 71. Everyone said it was pus on pasture, All right, the TB possums with big open lesions and doing these necropsy of possums, they were full of TB pus. So yes, they had open lesions and you thought, yeah, that's what it is. And it wasn't till I started saying, well, why don't we find so much TB in our sheep in, in the mm. West Coast? And we had found TB in sheep, but not the level we would expect given pus is supposed to be on the pasture because they graze closer to the ground, sheep graze close to the ground. And then one morning I was on a cyanide line. It was a frosty morning, there was frost over the possums. And I came across a TB possum, it, was, it turned out to be TB, and it had a big lick up it. And I thought, hello, I wonder whether it's really got to be that close contact. I talked to Professor Roger Morris at Massey and I said, oh, why don't you try doing some of this stuff and seeing how cattle and, and uh, deer react to these sort of animals. So they sedated possums, put out in front of cattle and deer, and lo and behold, cattle came up and muzzled them and licked them. Deer were really actually quite aggressive. They, they bit the possum, they threw it up in the air, they stood on it whereas sheep and horses skirted round it, they didn't approach it. We have been able to continue with control because possums are, as well as being a, a TB vector, also a conservation pest, they are an introduced mammal, and therefore the New Zealanders allow us to kill possums. A range of techniques is used by the Animal Health Board to control possums and ferrets, including traps and toxins. This control work is strictly regulated and can only be undertaken by suitably qualified contractors. The objective is to keep possum populations at low levels until the disease cycle is broken. Where necessary, trapping and ground baiting is supported by aerial application of sodium fluoroacetate, a biodegradable toxin, also known as 1080, which is highly effective in reducing possum numbers.
This approach is used where it's impractical to use ground-based control techniques, such as large areas of difficult forested terrain. Scientific advances and operational experience over many years have seen significant reductions in the quantities of toxins now required. Satellite technology ensures that the toxin is applied accurately over defined areas. This work is closely monitored and audited to ensure targets are met. Although the movement restrictions and testing regimes can be inconvenient for farmers, the alternative is far worse. The emotional and financial impacts of TB can be devastating. Some farmers who actually had big hits of TB, you know, their first experience of TB, would even feel they would be depressed and they would, some were suicidal. It was really, really, they felt failures and they felt ashamed. They thought their neighbours would be all looking over the fence at them and thinking there was something dirty about them, you know. And they did, they were really, it was a real terrible thing for them, back then especially, I think. Economically, of course, too, even though you got compensation, you lost that, that well, I lost that elite herd and other farmers had been building up their herds that they, you know, wanted and they just lose them and, and it was horrible. Mm. You know, at one stage, after about year four or five, and we tested and tested and killed and killed, um, we just had, to, we were thinking seriously of just quitting the deer, just killing them all. Some of them blamed themselves. The ones that blamed themselves were the ones that got depressed and, um, you know, almost suicidal. Some of them blamed meth. <laughs> yeah. Some of them blamed the neighbours. They, but it was, it was, they were all angry about it at some stage, and then they were depressed about it. And there were so many different reactions, and, and you could, I could feel it myself. I could know what they were going through. It was just not being able to get on top of it. You were doing everything right. You were doing the testing. You were killing all the reactors, um, but nothing was happening. You just kept getting it and getting it, and it was just kept coming out of the bush. By the late 1970s, it looked like TB was under control. But when government funding for the program was stopped in 1978, the disease came back harder than ever. By 1994, the number of cattle and deer herds infected with TB was at an all-time high. I'm estimated it's cost New Zealand a billion. A billion dollars uh, easily from that mistake of letting the head. Because mm. we, we, we were down to about th three herds here in the Buller, about 82 it was, and it just got right away. Thanks to the TB Free New Zealand program and the cooperation of farmers, the number of herds infected with TB is now at an all-time low. In 1996 there were over 1,700 infected herds. By 2010 that number had dropped to less than 100. While this is extremely encouraging news, we can't be complacent about the risks. It would normally take from, the, we estimate, somewhere between seven and ten years if we stop control now for things to gradually get worse and worse. And by probably um, 25 years, we'd be back up to somewhere around 1,500 infected herds. The dearest possum baguette's going to be the last one, but um, that I, we must maintain our vigilance. While the TB testing program, movement control restrictions and wild animal control form the basis of the TB Free New Zealand scheme, the Animal Health Board also does a lot of work behind the scenes researching new and alternative ways to combat the disease. The aim of the research program is to ensure that New Zealand benefits from best practice, scientifically backed expertise and the latest technology. Areas such as developing and evaluating TB vaccines for use in domestic animals and wildlife could have far-reaching consequences for the TB program, not only in New Zealand, but overseas as well. By 2026, the TB Free New Zealand program aims to eradicate the disease in wildlife across a quarter of the 10 million hectares currently containing infected wild animals, taking it one step closer to eradicating TB from New Zealand entirely.